Hey everyone, welcome to the ExtraPrize YouTube channel. My name is Brandon. I'm a solutions consultant with ExtraPrize. Today I'm going to walk you guys through a high level overview of the service portal. Before we get to the service portal itself, I want to show you two main ways that you can access it from the main UI page. First is coming up to all and typing in service portal. You can click service portal home. This will direct you straight to the service portal homepage. Another thing you can do is come up to the URL and get rid of everything past servicenow.com slash and type in SP, click enter. This will also direct you straight to the service portal homepage. So the service portal is designed for employees and customers to uh, basically have a streamlined process when they're ordering um, a product, uh, submitting a request or anything that they need uh, from the company. So uh, companies can offer a wide range of products and services. Uh, it can be also things like product enhancements or uh, different supplies for the organization. So the possibilities are pretty much endless with what can be added onto the service portal. Just like companies like Amazon, shoppers are looking for a quicker uh, request fulfillment for their orders. They're looking for transparency for the orders. They want to see the process of, you know, when's my order going to arrive, things like that. So the service portal was set up in a way um, to streamline the process for employees and customers uh, to get what they need quickly and efficiently in a self-service manner um, that kind of cuts out um, the need for having a technician or agent resolve that issue for them. That being said, there are ways to have uh, technicians and agents step in with this process if uh, they need to do so. So uh, end users can submit requests, they can get information on approvals, um, admins can add different details to the form. So a lot of this that you see on this homepage is configurable, pretty much everything is. So these buttons can you know, say different things. You can have more buttons, you can have less buttons. A lot of it is customizable based on your needs for the organization. Another thing to point out is that everything on the service portal can be based on roles and permissions. That being said, whoever is logged in can see different, uh, different widgets, different information. Um, that way it is efficient and it just allows the log in, logged in user to see what they are supposed to be seeing every time that they log in. So in order to explain the different parts of the service portal, I'll start with the search bar. So end users will come up to the search bar if they're looking for something uh, generic or if they're looking for something specific. But for example, let's say they have uh, a laptop issue and they want information on that, whether that's something from the knowledge base or ordering another laptop. So when you search in the main search bar, uh, you'll see different sources. You can add more, but for this example, we have knowledge bases and catalog items. So from the search term, which was laptop, different knowledge bases and catalog items are going to show here based on what's loaded in the system so that the end user can get transparency and see all of the options that they have in regards to catalog items as well as knowledge bases. Knowledge bases are a very pow powerful tool, which I'll get to in a little bit, but it does allow end users to um, educate themselves on an issue before reaching out to a technician, um, which ultimately lets them resolve issues on their own while also deflecting tickets for the company. So as I mentioned, these different buttons and widgets can all be customized based on the needs of the organization. But for example, we see request something, an end user can come in here and look at the different categories available. It's also important to note that you can add subcategories as well to keep everything organized. So for example, if the end user was looking for a new laptop, they could come into hardware, and just like any other e-commerce website, they could shop for uh, the different products that they are looking for and see what is available. If you drill into a specific item, you can get a detailed description on what it is, the different specs, and also list any options, and also add different text boxes based on what the item needs to display. You can also add attachments for end users to add different um, links or anything that they need to add um, when they order this product. When they do order the item, they can say who it is requested for if they do have the permissions to say it's requested for someone other than themselves. And they can also add different delivery information and special instructions if they need to do so. So once they do order this product, as I mentioned earlier, their end users are looking for a very transparent process. They're looking for basically when's my product going to arrive. 
So as you can see, once we ordered the laptop, we see the date submitted. We also see a request number and we see an estimated date of delivery. And then we see different information in regards to the product itself. So different products, depending on how they're set up, can also have different stages and different workflows. So you can see from um, when the request was submitted to procurement to delivery. So the whole point is to provide transparency to the end user so they can see where their product is at all times. Going back to the main page, as I mentioned, knowledge bases are also a very pow powerful tool inside of ServiceNow, and the service portal takes full advantage of that. So again, different categories can be added based on uh, the topic of the knowledge base. Again, this provides end users the ability to educate themselves on an issue for self-resolution without the need of an agent or technician stepping in. So when an end user does click on an article, you can see the information itself. You can also see um, who the author was, how long ago it was created, how many views it has, and you can also rate it zero or one to five stars. Based on the rating, the system will use that to recommend articles or not recommend articles in the future uh, for future cases for other end users who are uh, looking for articles. You can also rate if the article was helpful or not as well as provide comments and see other comments that are available. Also here we see get help. So users can submit requests or report a problem. Again, these are all these can all be configured based on what the company needs. Down here, we also see widgets. Again, these can all be customized based on the roles and permissions of the logged in user. Uh, they can be changed to say anything and be connected to different uh, reports, different data. So when they log in, they can see exactly what they need to see. In this case, we see um, different information like uh, any assessments or surveys that the logged in user has, as well as any announcements. Another thing I forgot to point out is that in the service portal, you can have banner notifications. So if something needs to be updated or changed or anything that needs to be um, notified of for the end user, that can be showed up here as well. As you can see, there's also different approvals as well as open incidents as well. So the whole point is to provide transparency to the end user, allow them to have a self-service experience as I suggested earlier, and it takes a lot of the load off on the back end for the technicians and agents, allowing for them to focus on other um, points of need in the organization to make them more efficient and allow the end user to get a better, better experience by themselves um, and educating themselves through the knowledge base and providing that problem solving uh, resolution for themselves. Another thing I will point out is the chatbot. So we will go into this further in a different video. So that's gonna do it for this video on the high level overview of the service portal. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment on the video or reach out to our website. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.